Welcome back to another episode of Full Zor. And in this video, we're going to talk about how a computer can pipeline or what computer pipelining really is. So we're going to discuss what fetch, decode, execute is, and then how computer pipelining works like that. But I want to give a little disclaimer, first of all. Um, this is how computer pipelining works. But once we go in the simulation and I kind of demonstrate it, um, the exact computer architecture might not be correct because I'm still learning about this just as much as all y'all are, but the outcome is the same. So although the internals might be not as accurate, we still get the output and it still works the way that we want it to work. And you'll see what I'm talking about in the future of this video. But first, let's talk about what is fetch, decode, execute. Computers do three things. The first thing is fetch. So fetch means it's going to send a signal to the RAM so it can fetch the data that it needs to be processed. And this is the first thing that it does. Then it goes into something called decode mode. And it takes the signal that the fetch got, decodes it, and sends an output signal depending on what that number was. And then we have the last mode, which is execute. Execute adds numbers and does other math to it, and then sends the data back to RAM. And that is the most basic form of what a computer does, which is fetch, decode, execute. And now that we know what fetch, decode, execute is, let's look at how computers take this basic three process and we can pipeline it to make it more efficient. So a computer can do three things, which is fetch, decode, and execute. And we're going to represent this on this graph with clock cycles on the bottom axis. So every clock cycle, computer can do one thing, fetch, next clock cycle, decode, next one, execute. But in a pipeline CPU, it can do multiple things per clock cycle. So while it's decoding the first code, it can fetch the second code. While it's executing the first code, it can decode the second code. So this will allow for better multitasking in a computer, and that's the basics of how pipelining actually works. Okay, so now we are going into the simulation and we're gonna see how we can make a computer architecture that can give us a pipeline output, and then how we can make a computer architecture that doesn't give us a pipeline output. And we're gonna see the difference and we're gonna compare the speeds at which this can be executed at. We are back in the simulation. And first we're going to go through our non-piped CPU. So if you look at this and you remember my other CPUs, this looks way more complicated. And the funny thing is the way that this is designed, it is way more complicated. So a non-piped CPU architecture, at least the way I designed it, is more complicated than a piped CPU architecture. Um, I don't know why. I, probably screwed up somewhere, but like I said, we get the output. So if you remember, um, the computer will fetch, decode, execute. So the way this architecture works is we have this little T flip-flop, this two-bit um, T flip-flop. So it gives us four outputs and different colors for fetch, decode, execute. And then we send it to these um, D flip-flops. So when the fetch mode is on, it activates this D flip-flop so it can fetch the data from the program counter to our read-only memory, our opcode. And then when the decode signal is on, it allows that data to go to the control unit so we can decode it. And then when the execute data is on, <clears throat> it allows it to be executed into the ALU, the registers, or our display so we can, we can actually see the data and the data can actually be processed but that's the basics of it. So we'll go through a few clock cycles, um, see how it works. But first we have to reset the system because I'm pretty sure. 
But yeah, as you can see, it takes a long time for this to work because it's doing only one thing per clock cycle. We're either fetching the data, then we're decoding, and then we're executing. But in this part of the op code right here, there is no code, so there's nothing to be done. And that's why it's kind of taking um, an eternity for this to happen. But we'll speed it up and then we'll see. Actually, we're almost done. I won't even speed this up. So now we are on the real code. And as you can see, oh well, um, oh well, it didn't really work. I didn't really fool the opcode that much, but as you can see, the clock signal does suck. This, this is really, really bad. So now let's go to our piped um, CPU. And ideally a piped CPU will cut the time in by like a third, right? So like that. So we'll go to our pipe CPU, open this up. Yeah, we'll go without changes. And look at that. It's actually the computer that we already made because the computer we already made is already somewhat piped, which is kind of funny. So we turn this on. Um, let me reset it real quick. Because look, so we turn it on, the program counter, um, I guess fetches the data, feeds it into our opcode, then our opcode sends it to the control unit, and then our control unit sends it to our, um, to be executed into the ALU and the other operations, all in one clock cycle. So the computer that we made can kind of do, can fetch the code and execute um, three things in one clock cycle. So it's already somewhat, somewhat piped. So it takes substantially less clock cycles to achieve the same thing. And, and there we go. So this program just adds the output by one and it just keeps doing that. And we can do it fairly, fairly easily, I would say. So um, that's the basics, basics, basics of CPU pipelining. Like I said, there's more research that needs to be done on my part so I can display the best information to y'all. But this is the basics of how it works. This is a good little basic example of how it will work and hope y'all appreciate it. So if you want to help support the channel in any way, I have all my schematics for my physical CPU circuits in the description below. So you can go check out my shop. Um, I'll set up a Patreon, I guess, kind of soon too. So you might see that in the description also if you just want to help the channel out. Um, please subscribe if you like electrical engineering and CPU architecture. That's my shameless plug. Happy holidays to all of you and your families, and I'll see y'all next week. And next week, or in the middle of this week, I have someone reach out to me and they want me to build a random number generator circuit. So that video will be coming out later this week for that viewer, if you are watching this right now. But that's it for this. Thank you for watching.